so uh, here's what we talked about yesterday. We're talking about the uh, geography, the climate, the political situation in Palestine in Christ's time. So we talked about how small um, Israel is, uh, 39 miles, uh, 390 miles long and 30 to 80 miles wide, uh, and that she, even though she is small, uh, she has forever um, been at the center of the world. We talked about the very climate, everything from this to this, and the very um, vegetation and uh, crops, and then the political divisions. Uh, there were three major areas, Judea, Samaria, and Galilee, but for the Roman purposes, they uh, for their provinces, they looked Judea and Samaria together, then Galilee and Korea, then uh, Turia and, or Iturea and Trichonitis, uh, which was less known area because many of them were nomads, um, and then the ten cities, the capitals, that were somewhat autonomous but somewhat under Roman rule. Uh, so here are the geographic divisions, and, and as we look at this cutaway, we're, we're going from west to, we're looking from south to north. But it goes from left to right, it goes from west to east. So it's like we're standing in the southern part of Israel looking north um, at, this, uh, at this cutaway. Uh, and the first area that you have is the coastal plain, which is con it's, it's very narrow, uh, anywhere from 6 to 20 miles wide, but uh, that's still very narrow. Uh, and, and it goes in the south. It's on the Mediterranean coast, uh, and uh, it goes from the south of Israel up to Mount Carmel. Anybody remember what happened on Mount Carmel in the Old Testament? Yes. Yep. Is there where like that one prophet proved that God was like? Good job, Sadie. Uh, yeah, that one prophet was Elijah, Elijah. And, uh, and he told the prophets of Baal, go ahead and build a sacrifice to your God and do what you need to do and whoever's, and then I'll build one and whoever's God is God will approve the sacrifice. And so they start dancing around and they start calling out to their gods and they, nothing's happening and nothing's happening. That's David. Do you kill anyone you want and make an excuse of a sacrifice to get away with it? That's not okay, but that, first of all, it wasn't it wasn't a person that was being sacrificed. Okay, it was, it was it was a, it was an animal. It was an animal that was being sacrificed. Uh, and there are they, I mean I'm, I'm 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 assuming it's a serious question, so I'm giving you a serious answer. Okay, uh, there are people and there are religions that do sacrifice, but Judaism does not, never has, never would. Yeah. And then, yeah, so they're dancing around, they're chanting out to their God, they're cutting themselves, and Elijah is trash talking them. In fact, at one point he says, maybe he's relieving himself. Maybe he's, your God's going to the bathroom, so he's not listening to you. Uh, so uh, nothing happens. So Elijah very quietly prepares the sacrifice of an animal uh, and uh, builds a trench around the altar and pours water on it so that the trench was overflowing with uh, water and uh, just prays quietly a short prayer and fire comes down from heaven and uh, just takes the whole thing. Just gone. Um, so that happened at Mount Carmel and you can go there. You can see Mount Carmel. You can see where that actually happened. This is also fertile farmland, which is really true of all coastal plains. All coastal plains uh, tend to, to be very fertile farmland, tend to be fairly uh, flat. All plains. So some of the richest soil in the world is uh, at, in this coastal plain on Isra uh, of Israel uh, on the Mediterranean Ocean. Uh, they grow grapes there, olives, grain, all kinds of things. It's, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. There's just uh, soil in the world. Uh, and, and it's some of the most desirable land in Palestine. The second area is the Shapela. And, and this, this, um, 
if you've ever been in country that is like rolling hills, um, parts of western Nebraska are that way, uh, although they're not very fertile farm or uh, land for growing things. Uh, parts of northwest Iowa are that way, where you're just kind of you know winding up and down, not large hills, but but hills. Uh, and the Chapela is is very much like that. So the Chapela is rolling hills. Um, and the hills are anywhere from 500 feet to 1,000 feet. Uh, and here's where they often grow olives and grapes and, and grain. It also is an, a farming area. It's called pastoral farming, meaning um, uh, cows and sheep and goats and those sorts of things. Uh, and, and this, in ancient times, this was a buffer between where most of the people in Israel lived and the Philistines. The Philistines lived on that um, that coastal plain, and as you know, uh, they were the enemy of Israel um, for a long time during uh, an Old Testament times, particularly during the time of Saul uh, and David. So that Shapela served as something as a, a buffer protecting them. Uh, from the Philistines who lived on the coast, and most of the uh, most of the people in Israel lived in this next area, and still do. Most of the cities are there. The Cisjordan Hills. Now, here's how you can remember Cisjordan. Uh, it means on the corresponding side or on the same side. So the the Cisjordan Hills, as opposed to the Transjordan Hills, the Cisjordan Hills are on the same side as Israel. Does that make sense? So Jordan, so Israel is on the eastern side, the, the western side, excuse me, the western side of the Jordan. So uh, the Cisjordan hills are on that same side. And these hills are become mountains to the north. Uh, and uh, and they uh, lie on, the, as I said, the western side, the same side as Israel, uh, across from the Transjordan hills on the hills on the other side of, uh, of the Jordan River. Uh, so, um, I mean, technically the term means the side opposite the perspective. That's what it's in Cisjordan on the same side as the perspective. But in this case, they're called Cisjordan because they're on the same side as Israel, same side of the Jordan as Israel is. Uh, and this is a high plateau that gradually gets higher. In fact, the, the, the uh, elevation to the south is something like 1,300 feet above sea level. To the north, you have um, mountains that are uh, much higher than that. In fact, Mount Hermon is uh, is uh, 9,000 9, miles high. So uh, it's it, it, almost 10,000, uh, not 10,000 feet, not miles, uh, 10,000 feet high. Uh, so yeah, those, those go up to uh, mountains in the north. And then, uh, so that, that's, this is where most of Israel's cities are. This is where Jerusalem is. This is where the cities in, in Galilee are. So most of the population lives in the area of the Cisjordan Hills. And then you have the Jordan Valley, uh, which is actually part of a, a huge continental rift. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But that continental rift runs for 4,000 miles. And that's why it's unstable. That's why there are uh, there are earthquakes. And then on the other side of the Jordan, on the trans side of the Jordan, uh, there are the trans Jordan hills. Remember, trans meaning corresponding to the other side. So uh, these are the mountains and the hills that lie on the east side, uh, across from uh, Israel. Across that's what trans means, and. Uh, Across the Jordan River. So this area is a high plateau uh, and uh, it rises uh, from the north. So anywhere from um, 1,300 feet to uh, 4,000 feet in height as it rises. So what are the cities? Jesus is recorded as visiting 21 cities. Now, this says Jesus visited 21 cities. That's what's recorded. Um, he probably visited more. Not everything Jesus did was recorded. John tells us that, but not everything Jesus did 
was recorded. And in the maps at the back of your book, you can see some of those cities that are significant in John's gospel. Uh, and most of those cities were located in the Cisjordan Hills because most of the cities were located in the Cisjordan. But for now, let's uh, let's return to um, this piece of geography that I talked about in a little bit. This continental rip uh, that runs for four thousand miles. Um, so um, let's, let's let's talk a little bit about elevations in Israel as I as I start this. Um, Jerusalem is about. 2,700 uh, feet above sea level. In 128 miles, two hour drive, less than a two hour drive, it drops 1,300 feet below sea level, uh, a drop of 4,000 feet. Uh, and then the Dead Sea is another 1,300 feet deep. Uh, and below that, below the, the Dead Sea is another 1,300 feet of sand, ending at 3,900 feet below sea level. Uh, so the Jordan Hills are 3,900 feet above sea level, uh, and everything kind of goes divide, divisible by 1,300 down from there. And, and that's how you get to the deepest place on Earth, which is the Dead Sea. Uh, so uh, this rip runs along that line. Uh, the, that valley, that Jordan uh, valley is uh, part of a much larger fissure or or uh, fault uh, in the Earth's surface, and it, it's known as the Afro Arabian Arabian um, Afro Arabian Rift or fault, uh, and it runs for about four thousand miles. It begins in the uh, Amanus Mountains. In Turkey, which is north of what we can see here, this is Saudi Arabia, obviously, and Egypt across the Red Sea from it. Uh, but it begins uh, way up in Turkey, no, well north of Israel. Uh, and um, it, 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 it extends south, southward through the Gahad, and uh, is it Turkey's north, it's through the Gahad, which is there on the Mediterranean. Sea, uh, and uh, then it goes through uh, Lebanon and Israel till it reaches uh, the Gulf uh, there. Uh, and then it extends down that, that Gulf uh, to uh, um, the, uh, almost the tip of the Arabian coast, and it splits. And one goes east into uh, the uh, ocean, the Indian Ocean. And the other goes west into Ethiopia. Uh, and so uh, this rift uh, that, goes, uh, that goes west uh, into Ethiopia uh, goes through Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, and Mozambique. And for a total of about 4,000 miles, or one-sixth of the Earth's surface. It's huge. Uh, and this rift is what created the Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea, and, and lakes in Africa, Lake Rudolph, Lake uh, Albert, Lake Edward, Lake Victoria in West Africa. I'll talk about that more. It separated the island of Madagascar from the continent of Africa. And there are between 200 to 300 earthquakes recorded daily in this rift. Not all of them are huge earthquakes. Some of them are just tremors, but 200 to 300. Um, and uh, uh, the, the geological plates of the rift lie on either side of the Jordan, and they're shifting at a uh, at a rate at a rate of about one and a half to one centimeter uh, a year. So I told you that the rift created Lake Victoria, and by extension, then it created Victoria Falls. Is on Lake Victoria. The um, the African name for those falls are the Smoke Pit Thunders, and they are among the most. And, and, and uh, uh, the reason I'm telling you this is Zambia is on one side of that rift. And of course, as you know, I, I love Zambia and been there three times. Uh, 
Uh, and so I thought I'd show you what that looks like. And the reason it's called the smoke that thunders uh, is that mist rises up the, uh, from the bottom and, and it looks like clouds. And you can see that a little bit there. In the rainy season, it is thunderous. Uh, in, in the dry season, it's, it's less so. But there's a picture of Victoria Falls. This is another picture of Victoria Falls. At the top of Victoria, Victoria Falls, there is what's called the Devil's Pool. And it's a calm place right on the edge of the vault. I can't remember how many people a year die trying to stay in the Devil's Pool, Devil's Pool uh, or Devil's Pool. Um, I think it's like seven people or something. But there are some brave people sitting in the Devil's Pool right on the edge of the vault. Okay. I will finish this up on Monday. Tuesday. 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 Tues